There are many misconceptions about posts on news, so we will analyze and debunk them all. In this series, we will discuss many topics, such as state of the whole people, peaceful coexistence, the post on USSR economy, the fall of the USSR, and many more topics. So if you're interested in post on USSR, be it as a leftist or just a curious person in general, just lay back and enjoy my video. Debunking misconceptions about post on USSR, episode 3, extra gory. Before we start this video, I just want to say ahead that this is an extra part of the third episode of my post on USSR series, which consists of three parts, of which the third I still have yet to upload regarding garbage of destalinization. Furthermore, this extra part for episode 3 uses um, vlog footage from Gori and shows various places of it, which we'll discuss in the video. So anyway, let's get straight into the video. Remember I discussed in episode 3 part 1 that Stone's personality cult was supposed to be removed or at least toned down via de -stonization. What if I told you that Stone's personality cult actually remained the same in one town in the USSR? That there is a town which was essentially unaffected in the USSR by de -stonization. Well, such a town exists. And this town is actually Stone's hometown, Gori. In this town, if we go off the Russian Wikipedia article for Gori, there are still Stalin statues, a Stalin park, the last Stalin museum in any former Soviet Republic, and even Stalin's personal train, uh, which he used in World War II, which is part of the Stalin Museum. Right now, you can see the two Stalin statues on screen, the latter of which is at the Stalin Museum. Also, if you watch the vlog footage that I'm showing throughout the video, You'll also see how the Stalin, uh, Stalin Museum looks like. So, what is the Stalin Museum like? What does it consist of? Well, it's just like any Stalin Museum that existed under Stalin. To quote an article, The museum has three departments, all of which are located in the central area of the city. The main building is a large palazzo in the Stalinist Gothic style, the construction of which began in 1951 as a local history museum. There are many items on display that actually or supposedly belong to Stalin, including some of the furniture from his workrooms and gifts. There are also a large number of illustrations, paintings, documents, photographs and newspaper articles. The exhibition ends with one of the 12 copies of Stalin's death mask. In front of the main museum is the house where Stalin was born and spent the first four years of his life. The museum presents Stalin's personal railway carriage. The carriage was used by him since 1941, including for trips to the Tehran and Yalta conferences. It was transferred to the museum by the North Caucasus Railway in 1985. Among the paintings in the museum's collection are two canvases, uh, I hope I pronounced that right, on the theme of Je Joseph Jugashvili's passion for poetry in his youth. So, so Jugashvili with Ilya. Chavadze in the editorial office of the newspaper Iveria, People's Artists of the USSR, winner of the Stone Prize of the Second Degree Uchi Japaridze, and Sosu Jugashvili with his comrades at the Gori Fortress in 1892 by the brush of the artist Peter Alvaridze. Now I'll also show you a slideshow of photos from inside and outside the museum. This is a picture of souvenirs and other objects of applied art which were given as gifts to Stalin. This is a kitchen plate with the image of Stalin. Those are glasses and other items from gifts to Stalin. This is a box presented to Stalin on his 70th birthday. Those are porcelain plates donated to Stalin. This is Stalin's office. This is Stalin's overcoat, boots, and cap. This is Stalin's train carriage. This is the arcade of the main building of the house museum. From now on, you'll also almost exclusively see vlog footage of the Stalin Museum in Gori in my video. Furthermore, to confirm that Gori was the last place of Stalin's personality cult in post Stalin USSR. Let me quote an article. By 1963, almost all references to Stalin had been erased in the USSR. Portraits and busts of Stalin were moved to museums. There are only two portraits of Stalin left hanging in the Terakov Gallery. 
Almost all those stone statues were dismantled. Only the stone statue in Gori, where he was born, remains. His house museum also remained there. Also in Georgia, Khrushchev allowed a large collective farm to keep Stone's name. In this collective farm in 1963, portraits of Stone continued to hang in offices and demonstrations next to portraits of Lenin. A statue to Stone has also been preserved in Central Asia. The fact that portraits and statues of Stone were moved to museums also shows that Khrushchev didn't want to just eliminate and destroy Stone's cult, but keep it as a part of history in museums, which in my view also shows respect towards Stone's historical legacy. So, if the Soviets wanted to see Stone statues or Stone portraits, they could still do so in museums. The Stalin statue in his homeland in the city of Gori was kept with the permission of Nikita Sergeyevich Khrushchev, remaining the most famous statue to Stalin in the USSR. This statue was dismantled on the night of June 20, 2010 by the decree of the government of Georgia. So basically, Khrushchev... Khrushchev, as the Russian pronunciation of his name, was even aware of Gori, but still allowed Stalin's cult to exist there, which pretty much complies with Khrushchev's position on Stalin, to quote an article again. In 1961-1964, it was written in all history textbooks that Stalin committed mass lawlessness and repression, but despite this, it was written in textbooks that Stalin was an outstanding revolutionary. It was emphasized that, uh, that it was necessary to fight against the detractors of Stalin. On March 7th to 8th, 1963, Khrushchev held another, held in another meeting with representatives of the creative, intel, uh, creative intelligentsia. During this meeting, Khrushchev returned to his assessment of Stalin's rule. In his speech, Khrushchev that said that Stalin had suffered from persecution mania and deep suspicion in the last years of his life. However, Khrushchev immediately said that despite this, Stalin had great services to the revolution and the country. In his speech, Khrushchev recalled the positive role of Stalin in pursuing a course of, towards industrialization and collectivization. Khrushchev cited excerpts from Stalin's correspondence with, Sholoh, uh, with Sholohov, from which it followed that Stalin suppressed the repression on the ground when he learned about them and provided assistance to collect the farmers as soon as he learned about their plight. Essentially, Khrushchev regarded Stalin as an outstanding revolutionary, an outstanding leader, as I've already said in episode 3, part 1 of my post Stalin USSR series, who did a lot of great things for the USSR, according to Khrushchev, such as regarding collectivization and, and, and industrialization, despite committing errors. In my view, Khrushchev not conducting the Stalinization in Gori shows how much Khrushchev loves Stalin even keeping Stalin's code alive in Stalin's hometown, which is fair. In late 1956, after the secret speech, in which Khrushchev praised Stalin as well, as shown in episode 3 part 1 of my post on star series, Khrushchev said that you cannot be a communist without being a Stalinist, to quote historian William Taubman. At the mass of New Year's Eve reception for the diplomatic corps and the Soviet elite, he as in Khrushchev, startled his audience by declaring that he and his colleagues all were Stalinists in their uncompromising fight against the class enemy. Three weeks later, before 800 guests at the Chinese embassy reception, he declared that being a communist was inseparable from being a Stalinist, so that even though mistakes had been made in the struggle against the enemies of Marxism-Leninism, may God grant that every communist will be able to fight for the interests of the working class as Stalin fought. Communism's enemies had tried to exploit his criticisms of Stalin's shortcomings to undermine the Soviet regime, but nothing will come out of this gentleman any more than you will be able to see your ears without a mirror. William Taubman, Khrushchev the Man, His Era, page 301. How can you still say that Khrushchev dismissed Stalin when he said that you cannot be a communist without being a Stalinist? Essentially, Khrushchev called everyone who does not support Stalin a revisionist. This is a massive middle finger to Trotskyists, armchair armchair leftcoms, anarchists, and basically anyone who opposes Stalin. 
Lastly, I want to finish this video off by talking about recent developments in Gori. As mentioned before, the Georgian government under Saakashvili in the year 2010 dismantled the Stalin statue in Gori. There technically is one more statue, but the other one is part of the Stalin Museum. The Georgian government of Saakashvili tried to change the museum in recent years. Well, under Khrushchev and Brezhnev, the museum was left completely untouched. Today, since the year 2010, the Stalin Museum includes a section dedicated to the repressions under Stalin. To, to quote the official website of the Stalin Museum in Gori. A separate room dedicated to the period of repressions. It exists since the year 2010. Source, the Stalin Museum in Gori. I actually looked a bit into the repression section of the museum, and it's actually pretty okay. I don't think that some of its content could have been published under Khrushchev and Brezhnev. For example, in post-town USSR, people like Trotsky, Bukharin, Zinoviev, and Kamenev were not really considered the victims of the Great Purges and were thus not rehabilitated. They were only rehabilitated under Gorbachev. But overall, the section dedicated to the repressions of the museum is pretty neutral and factually correct. I will read you out text from the repression section of the museum. In the 20s and 30s, representatives of the party elite also found themselves under attack of the repressive machine. The former head of the Red Army, L.D. Trotsky was the first to be eliminated from the political arena, and he was expelled from the country. In 1940, he was killed abroad by an NKVD agent. All those who had any relation to Trotsky were repressed. Lenin's closest associates, Bukharin, Zinoviev, Kaminev, Petikov, Rykov, were shot in 1933-1938, dubbed the Great Terror. In 1933-1939, uh, 2 million people were expelled from the party in the country, of which 1.2 million were arrested. All those who were brought alive to open trials in 1936-1938 fully pleaded guilty to terrible atrocities against the party and the people. By order of Stalin, People's Commissars G.G. Yagoda and N.I.E. Sorry, and Yezhov approved such extrajudicial bodies as Troika and uh, Dvoika, it was a mis mistranslation here by the bot, which arbitrarily decided the fate of people. The members of the Troika were the secretary of the regional committee, the regional committee, or the central committee of the National Communist Party, the head of the relevant department of the NKVD, and the prosecutor of the region, Territory Republic. According to official data, in 1937 to 1938 alone, more than 1.5 million people were arrested, 1.3 million were convicted by extrajudicial extra authorities, and about 700,000 were shot. The point of the repression section and Saakashvili's policies towards the Stalin Museum were to slowly turn it into a museum ded dedicated to the victims of Stalin's repressions, to quote an article. The Ministry of Culture of the Republic of Georgia has decided to transform the Stalin Museum in Gori into a museum in memory of the victims of Stalinist repression. This article is from 2012, but as Khrushchev said, communism's enemies had tried to, to exploit the criticisms of Stalin, including his own of Stalin shortcomings, to undermine the Soviet regime and Stalin, but nothing will come out of this any more than you will be able to see your ears without a mirror. For that reason, Saakashvili's government failed to transform the Stone Museum in Gori into a museum solely de dedicated to Stone's repressions. So this is it for my video about Gori. I apologize again for being too lazy to upload anything for over a year. All sources are gonna be in the pinned comment of the comment section, as well as the full vlog videos of Gori that you saw in my video. One of them is by a Russian liberal that I actually do not like, but regardless, thanks for watching and have a good day.